Thanks, everyone. Welcome to the Quad Cities Chamber's Business Brief with Blackhawk College, invest in your workforce and pave the road to ready. My name is Erin Platt, Director of Marketing here at the Chamber, and it's my pleasure to be your host for the event. Quad Cities Chamber Business Briefs are short, free to attend programs that are designed to connect you with the latest resources and guidance to help you with your, you and your organization thrive. So you can look for business briefs on our website and in our e-news and the content will always be available for you to refer to again. And remember, if you have any questions during the seminar, please place them in the Q&A box below and we'll try to get to as many as possible during the program. And with that, let's get started. I would like to introduce today's panel, Heather Bjorgen, Dean of Enrollment Management at Blackhawk College, Julie Galati, Director of the Business Training Center at Blackhawk College, and Michael Gibson, Blackhawk College Adult Admissions Advisor. Thank you for joining us here today, ladies. Heather, go ahead and take it away. Sounds good, thank you for that great introduction. I'm Heather Bjorgen. I'm here with obviously my two colleagues, uh, Julie and Michael from Blackhawk College. And today we're gonna talk about the benefits of and opportunities to invest in your workforce as we pave the road to ready and emerge from our current pandemic situation. And I'll advance this slide here. All right, so working adults uh, bring a wide variety of assets to their learning experiences, from managing competing priorities to finding time or resources where obvious solutions may not exist. And so we understand that working adults are a population of learners that are able to enroll, upskill, and reskill throughout their lifetimes. But reaching this population requires colleges to create learning models and build in flexibility to support them, while at the same time making transparent connections between the classes they're taking and the employer's needs. So today we're highlighting the need to sharpen our focus on working adult learners and outline some of the supports and opportunities available to this population at Blackhawk College in order to grow talent. And so long-term, if we invest in working adult learners, together we can provide solutions that positively impact businesses, organizations, and communities. So here we've got a slide. Um, that I wanna talk about. I'm intentionally designing learning opportunities around working adults is going to continue to be a critical approach for all of us. Um, nationwide in the Midwest and specifically in Illinois, which is what we're looking at here, we are approaching a significant demographic change in the number of high school graduates. The graph we have here shows the number of high school graduates recorded in the past projected out to the year 2037 based on birth rates. So this data is regularly updated by the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education. And this decrease in high school grads is due to a decrease in population among 18 to 24 year olds. So enrollment among this age group is projected to continually decrease. This spring in 2021, Illinois should have just over 149,000 high school grads, as you can see there. And then by the year 2037, it's gonna have closer to 115,000. So it's a decrease of 22.8% over the next 16 years. Um, took a look at the numbers for Iowa as well. It's a little bit more flat, um, but this spring, uh, Iowa should have just over 37,000 high school grads. And then by the year 2037, it'll have around uh, 36,800 high school grads. So it's a de decrease of 1.4% over that same 16 year time frame. So many of us can get behind the concept that education and today specifically post-secondary education is important and a good investment. But what we're really saying with this is that the outcome of education is what matters the most. And so if we're aimed at helping both society and individuals bend their life trajectory towards something better, it's about talent and how we nurture it. And when we're talking about talent today, this isn't just something someone was born with, right? It's instead talking about the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are honed through education and employer processes, employment processes. So we want to continue to build opportunities for adult learners to develop their talent and work with employers to acquire talent and grow within their organizations. So next, I'm gonna hand it over to Julie Galati, Director of Business Training Center at Blackhawk College. 
And she's gonna cover some of the resources available to adult learners as we work through the center. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, having us here as your guests today. Um, to kind of add on to what Heather was talking about, this whole importance of um, expanding the knowledge of the, of the workforce or working adults, um, businesses really do play a key role in that. Um, it can become part of their culture. Uh, it can be part of what makes you an employer of choice. And obviously, when you're investing in your uh, workforce, they are growing their knowledge, uh, which can come out in the form of dollars, dollars saved, dollars um, improved revenue, et cetera. Uh, it helps the communities have uh, an increased uh, better wage because then they're now more qualified for any additional openings that you might have at your, at your business. Um, it builds the whole social enterprise, keeping people here in our community and you know, growing, growing your talent uh, isn't just for your current business, but it's also for your future business. It can prepare you to be ready to take on additional uh, customers or expand your, your offerings as an employer. It definitely will increase your competitive advantage uh, being that employer of choice. And uh, workforce training uh, has been proven to help for a variety of key things within your business, one of which is the quality of the workers and the work. So um, there we go. So the quality of the workers and the work, they take more, more pride in their work. They feel more confident about what they're doing. They're more likely to speak up if they don't have something, if they don't understand something or a process. Uh, it also, like I said, improves their productivity. So that means that they're getting more done in less time. That's usually a big, a big factor for companies wanting to um, get as much productivity out of their workers. It improves morale. Morale is um, a very key piece to your culture. And when you're, we, I have found in working with businesses that when employees have been invested in through their employer, it impacts all across the company, it improves that morale and it improves the loyalty as well. Another component is it improves attendance. Workers are happy to come to their job. They like being part of the mission. They're thriving, they feel included uh, as to what your company stands for. A greater sense of pride and it decreases turnover. One of the things that um, I have found with working with companies is Sometimes they can find good workers, but then they can't keep them. And so that can obviously impact your business by um, having to repost that position, retrain that position, uh, whether you post it from within or from the outside. Now, the Business Training Center at Black Hawk College, which is the arm of the college that, that I'm in. So our role is specifically to work with employers in our community. Um, to prepare workers, to cross-train workers. Our function, the way that we operate, is that we work with employers to design and deliver uh, trainings that you might need in-house. That might be leadership or safety or 10-hour OSHA, welding, blueprint reading, anything like that. We start with the end in mind what should the worker know or, to, or be able to apply immediately upon the training. Another factor is, is that we work with subject matter experts. So we would work with the company as well as the trainer to make sure that they had a matching skill set in knowledge and ability to do training. We also have short-term training. So we don't go by a semester. We don't have letter grades. Ours is, ours is kind of in and out. We get in, we address a, a training issue or a knowledge issue or a skill gap or a performance gap. And we get that training designed, implement that training and measure that training for you know, before or after. But the key is, is that we're able to um, have the participant be able to apply that knowledge immediately. Another component within our department is called open enrollment. 
these classes are based off of the demand that we're hearing. Right now we're hearing a lot of uh, drinking water, beginning wastewater, a lot of fork trucks, CNC, welding, inventory management, industrial maintenance. Those programs are not just chosen by us. We are listening to the community and to businesses that say, hey, we have a shortage. Um, if it's a situation where the workforce is changing, a lot of people are retiring, we might have somebody sign up for this class because they want to be able to have a better uh, chance of getting hired by one of, one of your companies. Let me expand that one. This is just a quick graph. Uh, this has to do with our customized, uh, this graph on the left demonstrates evaluations for our customized training. Uh, these evals come from the participants that are in the class. We get those in, we tally them, and we send a copy to the employer so that they can see uh, the value of the training. The graph on the right is a before and after measurement of a skill set. In this case, it has to do with our uh, public offering of welding. The blue line represents what their knowledge was before as they entered into the program. The uh, line on the right, that orange, is shows what they feel their skill set is afterwards. So it is a huge jump and a wonderful visual to show that no matter what they're coming in at with their skill knowledge, they're leading with a much greater skill set that can then be transferred and utilized working for one of our local companies. Okay, so my question to you is, where are you now? As a, as a company, as a leader in your company, what does your skill set look like? Have you taken time to, to be done in a skill inventory? Uh, do you have a training budget in place? Do you know uh, what your attrition is going to look like in the next three to five years? How is your market growth? If you were to project your market growth, do you have in place right now the skill set that you need? Or is that something that you need to take a look at and make it a strategic priority? Recruiting is another component, uh, you know, again, with the retirements, a lot of companies right now are competing for the same group of potential applicants. How do you stand out? How will your business be the one that they want to go to that will strengthen your company? What does your prevention look like? There's a lot of talk now on safety, harassment in the workplace, things like that. Um, it's always better to be proactive than reactive. So take a look at that at what your uh, current process is and See if it needs to be updated and if you need to uh, in, include some training such as this within your company. And again, your competitive advantage. You know, when you have workers that are ready to go, skilled, they can make your product. And it's not just the functionality of hands, it's being able to use their head, heart, hands, and feet as well to, uh, you know, make you ready. So there's, um, there's a saying, a, Go ahead and pitch that. Thanks, Spain. So the myths that I've heard over the years, you know, hey, if we train employees, they'll leave. So I'd say, you know, would you rather have untrained employees who stay? Uh, so it's really, you know, all how you frame it. Some will say, well, our employees are already trained. What we have found when I've worked with, you know, hundreds of participants and many, many businesses is that when they're in the room doing the training, they're a little bit more open to sharing things that they really don't know or things that they don't feel as confident about. They might tell their boss that they know it, but there's a certain amount of um, benefit that comes for that employee to be able to speak openly in the classroom. Some will say that training costs too much. I would say, what is it costing you not to train? What's your pinch point? Do you have any bottlenecks that, that, are, that need uh, to be opened? Do you have any um, issues, whether it's union, non-union, and working together, things like that. Looking into the future, are you ready? Is your, do you have enough technology? Are people cross-trained? If you had to um, expand or if we're looking more at this remote working from home, what does that look like for your company? So those are just some things to be able to think about as you 
uh, grow and expand and operate here in this uh, wonderful community of ours. I'm going to turn that now over to Michael. Perfect. Um, so as we get started, um, we're just going to launch a little poll here. We want to get a sense for um, out of the people who are with us, uh, who might be uh, alumni with us at Blackhawk. So it looks like we have a few with us that are alumni. That's always nice to see. Um, so uh, one of the things that we kind of wanted to focus on as, as we move forward in this discussion is really about uh, how community colleges are here to be a partner with you in the community. Um, and that um, there's a lot of services that, that we can provide to you and to the community at large. Um, as well as to you and your employees um, that allow you um, to meet the needs of your business. Uh, so some of those things are things like our career services. Um, obviously, the certifications and the associate's degrees that we offer are an opportunity to grow the knowledge um, of uh, your employees and, and the community at large. Uh, we also have some opportunities as far as advisory boards. Um, there are a lot of different resources that we provide uh, to our students um, and having sense of what those kinds of things are and um, what's available to you or to your employees as they uh, interact with Blackhawk is an important thing uh, to understand as well. Um, and then I'll talk just a little bit about um, our alumni network and uh, some foundation opportunities, ways to be engaged in that way. Um, so we can move to the next slide. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an idea of the kinds of things that are offered through our career services. Um, there's uh, one of the th things that uh, it offers you an opportunity for is it's a free option to post uh, job opportunities that you might have where you're trying to bring in uh, new graduates. Uh, so it's a play, you know, I know there are a lot of uh, electronic ways to, to push out your um, postings that you might have, uh, but this is another opportunity to get some uh, new and eager people um, that you can uh, train, like Julie had mentioned, to kind of uh, do things in the way that you'd like them done. Um, the other thing that, uh, or some of the other things that they offer are uh, career assessments. Uh, so they have several different tools, uh, one of them being uh, a system called Career Coach um, that allows them to evaluate uh, what people's strengths are, what kinds of things they might be interested in doing. So uh, not necessarily to drill down to a particular uh, job that somebody might want, but more in what their strengths are and what kinds of jobs might align with that strength. With that strength. Uh, so you're a logical thinker. These are the sets of jobs that might align with uh, being a logical thinker, or you're a creative thinker. These are the site are the types of jobs that might align with that, um, as well as some information about what uh, availability of those kinds of jobs are in our community. Um, the, one of the other tools that we have is something called Big Interview, uh, which allows our students um, and community members to be able to kind of test their interview skills. Uh, before they go, come in and, and do the, the real thing. Uh, so that's a, a great kind of service to the community. Uh, we have also uh, started to provide some free workshops uh, around um, building. Uh, initially, we called them soft skills. That's kind of how people know them is that they're soft skills. 
Um, as we've moved through that process, we've done some reading and those kinds of things, and, and we're kind of uh, rebranding those um, and starting to call them power skills, um, because a lot of those soft skills that we need, like time management, um, negotiation skills, all of those kinds of things are things that um, are really essential to being successful in the employment world. And um, they're things that we're always working to perfect in the time that we're um, moving forward in our employment. And so uh, they really do make us um, more successful um, in the job market. And so um, that's why we talk about them more as power skills now. Um, there's also a lots of opportunities for you as employers to um, uh, per, to network with students through our career services, as well as um, to provide some mentorship. Um, I know a lot of times uh, one of the things that has been really meaningful to me as I've moved throughout my career has been a, uh, an opportunity to share some of the things that I've learned with people who are, are starting to try to learn those things. Um, so. Um, we hope that you'll take advantage of some of those, as well as um, internships and job shadowing for students, um, some opportunities for them to get a sense for uh, what jobs actually look like, as well as an opportunity for you guys to have a sense of uh, what are the uh, skill sets of these new incoming students and maybe get uh, to try them out before they're applying for a job. So that, that's a great opportunity as well. Um, and then um, obviously, like I said, there are the, the certificates and degrees. Uh, so our, our shortest certificates are about a semester long. Uh, most of them are about a year long. And then the degrees are generally uh, two years, uh, possibly with another semester or so of prerequisites, depending on what the program is. Um, they're in a lot of different areas. Uh, they're in the areas of agriculture, business, healthcare, uh, trade and technical, uh, computer technology, early child education, and criminal justice. Um, and uh, some of those uh, programs, particularly some of the health pro care programs, um, have some additional uh, application requirements in addition to being accepted to the uh, college itself. Um, also, uh, most of our agricultural offerings are actually at our East Campus. I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but in addition to uh, the campus that we have at Moline, uh, we also have a campus um, near Kiwani in Galva, um, and that's where most of our agricultural offerings are at, offered at. Um, so another opportunity for you to be engaged with us as a community college is uh, through participation in our advisory career advisory boards. Um, so our uh, career and technical programs are really built to make sure that the uh, students are employable as soon as they come out of uh, the program. And so we really are always looking for employers to be a part of uh, those advisory boards um, to share your skills, your knowledge, practical experience um, of kind of what's going on in, in the particular career area right now. Um, it also offers you the opportunity to have some open discussions about uh, perhaps what new career or degree options might be out there and what your staffing needs are. Um, so we always want that to be a kind of two-way conversation with employers in the area uh, where uh, we have an opportunity to hear from you, uh, what are the needs, kind of much like what Julie said with those short-term trainings, we wanna be having those conversations as well um, at the college credit level of are we offering the things that we need to be offering to meet your needs in the community. Um, it's also an opportunity to get your company out there um, to build its reputation with upcoming students and, and um, kind of uh, show your investment in students and in the community by being part participating in those 
um, as well as it's an opportunity to really uh, bring in some quality employees uh, into your company. Uh, so um, we certainly encourage you to take a look at what kind of opportunities there might be for you to participate in those uh, advisory boards. Um, the other thing we like to share um, is one of the things about being a community college is that, um, that we're about more than just uh, the classes that we provide. Um, and that's true with a lot of colleges, but I think in particular community colleges really uh, focus on uh, making sure our support services are as strong as possible so that everybody can be successful as they move through our process. Uh, so some of the things that we offer under that area is we offer tutoring um, that has um, been in person, um, online in Zooms like this. Um, and we also have access to a 24 hour chat tutoring service. Not that any of us have been up at 12 o'clock or midnight <laughs> working on our homework, but those of us who do uh, appreciate having uh, access to something like that, uh, where you can ask a question when everybody else is asleep. Um, the other thing is positions like mine and admissions, as well as academic advisors that are really there to help students walk through and navigate the process of schooling, uh, make sure they're choosing the classes that get them the degree that they want, make sure they're navigating financial aid, um, that they have somebody that really can be their go-to person to help advocate for them as they move through some of the red tape of, of managing um, FAFSA and um, all the kind of processes that need to be in place to get started with school. Um, we're also very proud that we have a counseling aspect that's available to our students, uh, particularly this year with the additional layer of things that people have been uh, dealing with, with COVID and isolation and those th kinds of things. Uh, our counseling has been a really important aspect to make sure that people are uh, continuing to tend to their mental health as they're trying to be successful in school. Um, we're also very proud that we've worked to build a very strong food pantry for our students at Blackhawk. Uh, that way uh, that if they are struggling to meet their kind of immediate needs, they have an opportunity to uh, fill those without really uh, having to go someplace else, uh, without having to really kind of prove that there's any need or anything like that. Uh, we have emergency access to it through our counseling services, as well as a bi-weekly kind of, uh, it's been a drive through during COVID. It used to be a walkthrough before then, of just being able to grab a bag of things as you need them. Um, so that's been a really great addition that we've had over the past couple of years. Um, and the other thing that we've grown significantly, particularly during COVID, is our ability to provide um, really strong support as far as library services, as well as um, technology loans. Um, so we used to have a small technology loan program through our Perkins program that allowed for some laptop loans. Uh, we've really been able to grow that quite a bit with some of the funding that we've received uh, as a, a COVID relief. Um, and so um, now we have, can offer that to many more of our, um, our students. And so that includes um, loaning of a laptop if that's something they need, as well as we have um, access to some hotspots. Um, so if they um, need access to a computer to be successful in school, as well as if they need access to um, internet services, those are, are both things that we can offer. Um, and the final thing I wanted to talk just a little bit about is the opportunity to be involved either as an alumni or to be engaged with our, our foundation. Um, again, that's really an opportunity for you to connect with our students um, to uh, build their professional network and yours. Uh, by being involved with those groups. Um, it's also a really great opportunity to connect with um, other alumni at Blackhawk, as well as an opportunity to connect with instructors. Um, 
and uh, perhaps find ways that you can utilize the expertise of those instructors. Uh, one of the things that we've had for a while um, that we're looking to, to possibly grow as we move forward is a speakers bureau. Um, so uh, there are experts in your own backyard. I know sometimes we argue that expert means 100 miles away or more, but there are experts in your own backyard and be able to use those as you're looking uh, to learn about things. Um, we certainly encourage you to do that. Um, and it also allows you to kind of be in the loop as to how things are changing or, or the ways things are moving as far as the college. Um, if you're involved in, in those kinds of things, um, it allows you to kind of be in the loop as to uh, new directions we're moving or those. Uh, and then, um, Finally, uh, there's the opportunity to give, right? There's the opportunity to invest in future students who might be your employees as they move forward, um, it, it, as well as um, part of what the foundation does is provide scholarships. I, we have um, over 80 different scholarships that um, support our students in being able to uh, fund their education. Um, and, um, we're always looking for community members who can be a part of that scholarship review and can help us to be making decisions about where uh, those funds go. Um, so that's just a little bit of the ways that we can work together. Um, we, as you can see, they popped up all of our contact information here. Uh, we would love to talk to you if you have heard about things that you're interested in or see ways that we could partner moving forward. Um, we're always looking uh, to partner with the community. And I'm gonna pass it back to Erin. Sorry, I needed to unmute there for a second. Thank you so much. As we all know, workforce development and talent attraction is such an important topic. So everyone who's out there listening, this is such great information to know how community colleges, especially Black Hawk College, can be one of your training partners and can be a partner to help you grow your workforce. Uh, thank you again for joining us here today, Heather, Julie, and Michael, and for providing us all with this. And a reminder, this information will be on our website, posted on our website later today. And you all will be receiving an email from the chamber asking you to complete uh, a brief one minute survey. And it helps us know how we're doing. And you'll be entered into a monthly drawing for a $25 gift card for filling out your survey. So thank you again. We so appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day.